Greetings everyone, welcome back to another video. And so, uh, we're back playing Katawa Shoujo, which is, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so I decided while I am playing Persona 3 Reload, I want to come back to a couple of old, older games I played. It's been a year since I played Katawa Shoujo. Uh, yeah, let me fix my phone real quick. Okay. And if you look right on this side, you can see that I got Hanako's ending by accident. <laughs> I was trying to play um, through the game again because they added it on Steam quite literally last month. <laughs> and I just found out about that. So that's why you know, I decided to play it again. But I accidentally got Hanako's ending. Uh, well, not Hanako's ending, but like Hanako's... I, I started Hanako's path. Um, so, so, yeah... So I got the little, uh, like, animation bit that, I don't know, the cinema. Yeah, this one. Because I already completed Lily, so I was trying to complete Lily's ending, but then I accidentally <laughs> started Hanako's. So, yeah. And then, uh, I had to replay the entire game to get this right here. This is where we left off last video. A year ago. Yes. We left off at the note. Um, cause I just watched my old video. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. Let's just, just, let's just start this. So it says, Carefully, carefully I open the envelope and draw out the folder, fold the letter within. Pretty sure I already did all this. But how are you? I hope we, uh... Hope you are well and happy at your new school. Everyone here misses you. Almost all of our second year class got put together in class 3-1 for the final year. So we are pretty comfortable right now from the uh, fr uh, comfortable right from the beginning of the year i'm sure you would have been assigned to this class as well okay the mood among the third years seem to be very anxious about the final exam even though they are so far away the teachers are badgering us about it all the time even old mr tachibana who is by the way our homeroom teacher at <laughs> this year would you believe it I was sure that he'd re retired after our second year, but here he is, nagging everyone about studying for exams. Great. Fix that. There we go. Okay. I think things uh, like that are the main reason why the mood among the third years is so nervous. I must admit that I'm somehow losing confidence in myself as well, even though I've always fared reasonably well in exams. It's so weird to think that we are or we are already seniors, isn't it? Time really has flown past. I wonder where it went. The new first year seemed so young and somehow really innocent. I keep wondering if I was like them in my first year. I've been feeling nostalgic like this for the whole first trimester. There are other things I want to say. I'm writing to you because I felt that there are things I should have said after the incident back in winter. I really regret that I wasn't able to say them in person. And I have no excuse for it. Yeah, I think that... I think that I have had quite enough of this. I crumpled up the sheets of paper and tossed it across the room. My aim is off, so the letter rolls under my nightstand instead of going into my wastebasket. That was an apology for abandoning me, except... I don't know that I really need it anymore at this point. The hospital seems like a lifetime ago, and here now I've got other things on my mind. Emmy for starters. It wasn't great to be abandoned during my stay, but it's not something I'm worried about anymore. In fact, I hadn't even thought about the hospital in, in what feels like forever until this letter came in. You know, it's almost annoying to have received it. I've got exams to study for my, myself. I have no time for the past. Now about that homework. Wow. Also, since this is the Steam version, it doesn't have the um, the, the stuff, you know. <laughs> you know in my M Emmy playthrough or whatever, if you've uh, seen it, or if you know anything about this game, it doesn't have the stuff. Because it's on Steam. I, I downloaded it on Steam because I wanted to get the achievements uh, locked on there. <laughs> So that's why I got it on Steam. But it saves me the trouble of censoring things. So whatever. So what's the plan for today anyway? I'm waiting patiently in the hallway of the girls' dormitory just outside of Emmy and Rin's room. 
Emily's apparently helping Rin with getting dressed. I suppose that makes perfect sense, as I have no idea how Rin would get dressed otherwise. Picnic? Picnic. That's what I said. Sounds pretty exciting. Oh crap, we're going to... I know, right? Rin cho uh, chooses this moment to make an observation. The sky seems threatening today. Actually, I noticed that too on my way over. Despite the sunshine of the early morning and afternoon, um, or at the early morning, the afternoon seems to have taken a turn for the gloomy. There is a heaviness to the air as well, or there's a heaviness to the air as well, that usually heralds a rainstorm. I wonder if I should have brought in my umbrella. She's got a point. I mean, you sure that you still want to risk getting caught in the rain? I don't even know why I'm bothering asking. Emmy pops out of Rin's room into the hallway looking shocked that I even suggest cancelling our plans. Of course! What? The threat of... Uh, what? Uh, oh, no. The threat of rain supposed to stop me? I can't help but grin at her bel belligerent response. It's almost like she's daring the rain to come. Mother Nature were walking the streets, I think Emmy would probably start a fight with her. It'll raise my <laughs> I need to raise my microphone volume. Cause I uh it's I don't think it's uh okay. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um or at the least challenge her to a race. In fact, Emmy seems almost aggressively cheerful today. Rin Rin wanders out into the hallway looking her usual self. Well then, are we, ri are, are we all ready to go? I'm ready. Rin nods and says a single word. Basket. What? Beg pardon? Basket in em Emmy's room. You should carry it. Emmy claps a hand in her mouth, embarrassed. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot all about it. Nice save, Rin. I mean, darts into her room and emerges with what looks like a very well-stocked um, picnic basket. As she hands it over to me, I notice that it feels heavy enough to be one, too. Good lord, how much food did she pack? More to the point, where, where, where'd she get the money for all of this? So, are we set to head out? Yep. Okay. Rin gives another nod and we head out of the dormitory. Okay. Also, I moved my, um... My, uh, or my TV, well not, I didn't move my TV, I moved my desk, but I'm looking this way now, so it's perfect. <laughs> so I don't have to flip my, my, my thing, <laughs> whatever. I can't help but frown when I notice how gray the sky has gotten in the, in the 10 minutes I was inside. Still, Emmy doesn't seem concerned by such petty con concerns as the color of the sky. She positively... She's positively skipping as well as we walk. God, <laughs> which reminds me, where are we? Where are we going? This brings Emmy up short, and she shoots me an embarrassed look. You know, I hadn't really thought of that. Uh, what? What do you think, Sal? Well, there's the spot where we ate during the festival, but it might be nice to leave the campus for a while. However, I'm not sure if there's any good places to do that in town. Just as I'm about to buy a mouth, Rin unexpectedly interjects with a suggestion. There's a park in town near the art shop. Great idea, Rin. I totally forgot all about that place. Price is averted. What? Do you know how to get there, Rin? Rin shrugs. It's pretty likely. Good enough for me. God, why, why does it double click like that? Oh, I forgot. Because my mouse, mouse is stupid. I'm going to use the keyboard. <laughs> I would prefer knowing for sure, but what the hell. Lead on, Rin. Damn, because my mouse double clicks. It's annoying. The three of us quickly make our way off campus and take the road down into town. The basket's a bit heavy. I hope that the park is close by. <laughs> we pass the art supply store, Rin slowing her pace slightly as we go by. Emmy notices Rin change of pace and stops. Uh, you want to go in, Rin? Rin shrugs. Nothing I need. Are you sure? There's the slightest flutter of a smile on Rin's face. 
quick, quickly replaced with her usual expression. Life's uncertain, but on this at least I am pretty sure, okay? Nice of you to offer. Well, it's not like I'm the only- It's not like I'm the one carrying the basket, but I'll bet Hisao wouldn't have minded anyway, right? Oh, of course not. This is hardly a heavy load. I, f I flex for emphasis. <laughs> Emmy stifles a, sort, a snort of laughter by pointing to the park at which we've studied, or at which we suddenly arrived. Oh, I remember this place. I ran into you here that one time, didn't I, Rin? Rin's eyebrows raise, raise it slightly. Maybe. I'm unwilling to say for certain, one way or the other. Memory's trick. Memory's a tricky thing, you know. Well, I'll be. We made it in one piece after all. The sun's still nowhere to be seen, but neither Emmy nor Rin seem to mind. Yeah. Ooh, new CG. Um, let me hide the thing. Is it just H? Yeah, it is H. Okay, look at that. Look at that. Uh, CG, <laughs> but um, it I, like right before I was making this video, I was just just skipping through the entire game. I got both endings for um, Lily, and then I got um, the bad ending for Act One. You know, with uh, whatever the fuck his name is, I don't remember his name. And um, and then, like I said, I, I accidentally started the the Hanukkah route. But whatever, I looked at this for long enough. We find a spot to sit on the grass and I set the basket down gratefully. There's a surprising amount of food prepared. Maybe we were supposed to be joined by some of Emmy's teammates or something? I'm starving, diggin'. She attacks the food as, she's, as if she's had nothing to eat for years. Oh. <laughs> it's raining. I'm gonna hide this one. Because it's raining. Look at that. <laughs> Did her face, bro. Uh oh. What the? Oh, I accidentally clicked off. <laughs> what? Oh crap. Oh. Looks like the weather is not going to cooperate with us after all. Emmy glares at the sky as if that alone will hold back the rain. I very nearly believed she can do it. It's one heck of a glare. It had. Better cooperate. You hear me, Sky? You stop that rain right this instant. <laughs> the Sky doesn't seem inclined to listen to her, despite the commanding tone she's taking with, with it. Instead, the rain seems to increase. Her rin wrinkles her nose in distaste at this turn of events. Regrettable. What do you mean? Rin shrugs. I could paint this if I weren't, uh, if I weren't out here. Shame to miss it all. Or shame to miss it is all. She doesn't seem angry or annoyed about it. Just a little disappointed. Emmy laughs in response to Rin's comment. <laughs> uh, guess we should have uh stopped in the art supply store after all, huh? The rain increases a little more. Offended that we haven't fled yet. Despite the warm temperature, we've been enjoying the rain, or uh, despite the warm temperature we've been enjoying, the rain is rather cold. I wish I'd brought my umbrella. Hey, we should probably head inside to keep dry. We're already pretty wet, he sow. Yeah, but we can dry off this way and maybe wait out the storm. You don't want to catch a cold or anything, do you? Emmy considers this for a moment. I can tell that part of I can tell that part of her wants to stay out of the rain just to spite the weather. Unfortunately for her, the weather hardly the weather hardly cares about what we do. I suppose you're right. Where could we go? I don't I don't have an answer for her. The area is still pretty new to me. Though I guess I'm slowly getting used to the school itself. The surrounding town remains a mystery. All I know is that the art supply store that uh and that uh, all I know is the art supply store, and that's only because we've just passed it. Fortunately, Emmy soon snaps her fingers in triumph. That's it! There's a tea shop nearby! 
We could have some tea and dry out, no problem. Doesn't sound like a bad idea. Great, you know where it is? Emmy nods, looking fairly confident. Sure do. I think. <laughs> okay. But it'll be an adventure either way, right? Adventure, huh? Well, I suppose we could use a little adventure. I think as long as we get out of the rain, I'll be happy. The picnic basket is a little lighter now, at least. Lead, or lead on. Rin and I follow Emily, Emmy as she weaves through the streets with something approaching, uh, with something approaching confidence. Now a left here. There, the Shanghai. Emmy beams triumphantly as she points to the tea shop. It seems fairly crowded inside. A symptom of the sudden rain, I'm sure. Welcome, can I? I'm surprised to find out that our waitress is none other than Yuko. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. We went um went to the tea shop with uh with Lily and and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. We also went to the tea shop with uh freaking uh Misha or whatnot for the bad ending. Not a bad ending. Fix my phone because uh okay that should be good here. Yeah. Uh she sure looks the part in her uniform. It's hard to believe this is the same librarian from our school. Does she work two jobs? I guess that must be it. Oh, it's you. Yuko seems to know Emmy. Emmy grins brightly, pleased to be remembered. Hey Yuko! Hi Yuko, I didn't know you worked here too. Do I know you? You seem awfully familiar, but I don't think I've ever seen you here or seen you in here. We met at your other job at the Yamaku Library, remember? Her eyes widen in memory. Yeah, that's it. Nice to see you again. Oh no, this is bad. I should have remembered a customer's face. I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Yuko goes from realization to panic in a split second. Performing a series of high-speed bows, I narrowly, I narrowly avoid getting headbutt in the process. Whoa, hey, calm down. Listen, I wasn't a customer when we first met. In fact, I hadn't even been in the sh Shanghai, so it's alright. Not the best display of logic, but it seems to relax her a little. Do you really think so? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Positive. Isn't that right, girls? Emmy has been watching this little drama unfold with considerable amusement. Yep, it sure is. Well, okay. So, Yuko, got room to seat us? Yuko nods and leads us to a corner booth, um, providing us with some small towels before taking our order. Um, what, what will you have? Cake and some tea too, I guess. What kind of cake? Surprise me. Yuko looks uncomfortable at the thought of surprising anyone, but she gives a nod and turns to Rin. And for you? I'll take a straw. My feet are all wet. What? <laughs> sorry. Or sorry? <laughs> That's a, the drinking kind of straw. One, please. Yuko is obviously uncertain of what to think about this. <laughs> she fiddles with her pen and and stationary for a moment, uh, looking like she's about to cry before turning in my direction. And you, sir? Just tea, I think. Emmy would probably yell at me if I ordered a cake. Oh, come on, Hisao. Don't let me be the only one with food. I'll feel like a pig. Just trying to eat healthy. Your orders, uh, after all. Well, today's your day off. You can be healthy tomorrow. Well then, I suppose I'll have some cake after all. Yuko seems slightly irritated that I'm changing my mind. What kind? I glance at Emmy and grin. Surprise me. <laughs> okay, bro. Okay. Yuko sighs and nods. Very well. Your order will be out soon. <sighs> Despite the crowd, our order um, does indeed arrive quickly. Thanks, Yuko. Uh, Yuko nods in appreciation. Um, this is a different 
guy than usual, isn't it? What? A different guy? Uh, Emmy must notice my confusion because she seems a little embarrassed. What? Oh, yeah, I guess he is. This is my friend, Hisao. We've met. Huh, small world. Well, let me know if you need anything. Okay. <laughs> that. Okay. With that, Yuko takes off like a shot to, like a shot to wait on some other tables, leaving me to ponder her comment. A different guy, huh? I guess it makes sense, right? I mean, he's pretty popular, or so I've been told. It's probably that. Um, it's probably that kid from the track team. This is stupid. I can just ask Emmy. So, who's the other guy, huh? You got a secret lover or something? Emmy laughs again. Only I get the feeling it's from nervousness as much as anything else. It's just the track team captain. He likes coming down here after practice sometimes. So, if we have or so if we have anything to discuss, I tag along. Hmm, sounds mighty sus to me. <laughs> oh, I see. I could let the matter drop, but I can't resist um, at least getting another dig in. So, it is a secret lover. I knew it! Rin watches our play, seeming, <laughs> seeming um, mildly amused before muttering some, uh, something that I don't quite catch. Anyway, what? Why anyway? What? Uh, what? What? Huh? <laughs> Rin jerks back from whatever her mind wanders off to. Huh? What did you say? Huh? <laughs> no, before that. No idea. Oh well. Okay. I let the matter drop, but I can't help notice that Emmy seems relieved that Rin interrupted the conversation. Maybe I went a little too far. Conversation dies down for a moment as Emmy and I um, busy ourselves with cake. Mine is strawberry and surprisingly good. <laughs> Emmy seems to think so too as she suddenly reaches over with her fork and steals a bite. Thief! Pirates, that's diff- there's a difference. <laughs> We're not on the water. Well, no, but there's a lot of water outside so it still works, right? Besides, you can have some of mine. Um, I think it's cranberry or something. I should have asked for the strawberry. I like strawberries. Feel free to help yourself to mine if you really must. For some reason, I feel compelled to add, seeing as how you've already done it once and all. Emmy sticks her tongue out at me, but that doesn't stop her from or doesn't stop her from appropriating my cake. I try some of hers as well. It's raspberry and pretty good. The rain let the rain let up. It would appear that Rin is correct. Good timing too. I finished my food and it looks like Emmy has as well. Well, we'd better pay and get a move on before it starts raining again. It takes a few it takes a few minutes to get Yuko's attention, but we pay and get out pretty quickly. So, do you want to return to the park? My jaw nearly drops. Are you kidding? It's probably going to rain again. In fact, I think I just felt some raindrops. Hmm. You may be right. Well, okay. I'll let you off the hook this time, but you owe me a picnic now. Got it? I don't know if she's addressing me, Rin, uh, Rin or the both of us. Fine, fine. Now hurry up. I wanted to get some laps in at the track, and it would be nice to do it without the rain. I thought that I thought this was your day off. Well, Emmy suddenly seems reluctant to explain herself. I need the practice. And I need to burn off that cake anyway. What the? Oh, crap. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling that she's leaving something out? Are you sure it wasn't that that uh Are you sure? It wasn't that much cake. No, it wasn't that much cake for you. I ate most of it. She's got a point there. Still, I feel like I should at least offer to run with her. Okay, so here's the offer, offer to run with Emily. Or Emmy, not Emily. Okay, I'm actually going to save here because there might be another ending at this point, but I don't know Like if we keep quiet, but we got to offer to run with Emmy. Um, uh, hey, I'll run with you. I might as well, right? Emmy shakes her head 
um, empathetically. No, no, you won't, he, uh, he sout. Rest is critical for you, remember? I won't allow you to push yourself too hard. I guess she's better at giving advice than taking it. Whatever you say, Emmy. I think it's probably best not to press the issue. Yeah, probably best. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go over. After we push the girls' dormitory, it starts to rain again. Emmy's expression sours slightly. Oh man, stupid rain. Hey, it'll let up soon enough. You can go running then, right? Emmy snorts, seemingly amused. Like, I'm not going to run in the rain. Well, you shouldn't. You'll catch a cold. Emmy waves her hand airily. Ridiculous. I don't get colds. My immune system is far too strong for someone like something like that. I can't help but laugh. Well, I'll see you tomorrow then, okay? Yeah. Thanks for coming. Oh, and for carrying the picnic basket. I'll bring it for lunch tomorrow. We can have our picnic on the roof. Sounds good to me. See you then. Emmy grabs the basket from me and shoots through the door. Ring gives me a sort of half nod and, and ambles inside as well. Damn, it's wet out here. I need to get back to my room and, and into some dry clothes. Yeah. <laughs> but the I'm pretty sure she's going to catch a cold. Because, um... I don't know, it's kind of obvious. It's, it's whatever. <laughs> I'm soon in front of my door. But I'm intercepted by the sudden appearance of Kenji, who appears to be carrying a stack of books. Okay, let me try remembering the voice I gave him. Um, 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 uh, okay. <clears throat> hey, man, give me a hand, will would you? Huh? The books are unceremoniously dumped into my arms as Kenji fumbles with his room key. Thanks, you're a lifesaver. If you weren't around, I'd have to keep my door unlocked, and that's just begging for trouble. The perfect opportunity to set an ambush, or maybe just plant a bomb if they don't want to get their hands into dirty. Probably don't. Afraid they'll break a nail or something if they have to stab me. Woman. <laughs> my mind thinks about uh, dig uh, digesting the verbal uh, torrent. That's just been unleashed, but elects to remain comfortably in the dark. Uh-huh. Anyway, where have you been, man? I could have used some help carrying these back from the library. I knocked on your door, but you weren't there. Oh, sorry. Not really. You appear to think I'm some kind of pack mule. I was out with Emmy and Rin. Kenji staggers into a shock. It looks like I just shot his dog, if he had a dog. The limbless ladies again? <laughs> what do you do this time? Well, we wound up at the Shanghai. I'm prevented from continuing by a sudden exclamation of despair. The Shanghai? Why the Shanghai? No, 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 man. You can't just go to the damn Shanghai. It's the most dangerous place in the city. A, a variable stronghold of the best agents. I know I've met them. Damn. Okay. Bro is insane. <laughs> um, okay. They'll stop at nothing to lull you into a false sense of security and then BAM! He hits the door from the em for emphasis. While it's gone, bus pass, gone, identity, fucking gone, man. God, my, my mic is peaking right now. I'm in the red. Well, I was just in the red. Okay, whatever. Um, promise, you, promise me you won't go there again. You seem so vehemently opposed to the idea of the Shanghai that I'm willing to lie a little in order to get to my room. Sure, I won't go there again. At least I won't ever tell you I've gone there again. This seems to um, mollify my bespectacled companion. Good, good. Sorry to come on so strong, but I know the danger there too well. If you, if you, if you just, or if you just wander into the lion's den again, you got out of there alive once, but twice is pushing it. 
Yeah, well, I need to get it. I need to get changed and uh, do homework, so I'll see you later. Huh? Oh, sure, whatever. I suddenly remember that I'm still holding his books. You better take these. I catch a glimpse of one of the titles. Something about cryptograph. T cryptography. What a weirdo. Kenji grabs his precious cargo from me and disappears through his doorway. God, doing Kenji's voice always hurt my throat. <laughs> I open my own door and walk in, grateful to get out of my oh, <laughs> grateful to get out of my soaking wet clothes. The rain outside picks up, and I find myself hoping that Emmy's not um not out running in this weather. She seems so adamant about doing the run alone. Oh crap! <laughs> I can't help but wonder if her legs still or her if her legs still bothering her. I try to remember whether or not. I've seen her limping at all today, but I can't. I guess I was too caught up in enjoying the day, even if it did rain on us. As I think back over, um, if I think back over the events of today, I keep finding myself focusing on my running partner. Um, her complete refusal to allow the rain to spoil her plans was incredibly cute, but there was something else there too, sort of an unflap attitude when it comes to enjoying the day as it comes. I really like that quality. Maybe I need to do a little of that myself. Okay. I know for for everyone else's um or I'm, I know Emmy has a bad ending. Um it's like at the end, I forgot what option I have to pick for it, but I have it somewhere. Um but it's like somewhere in act 3. That if you pick um, one of the, if you pick the other choice instead of picking the good ending choice, you get a bad ending. Which I might just go for the bad ending first, and then I'll go, I'll go get the good ending. Well, uh, whatever. I don't know how far away I'm from chap for from Act Three though. But the sound of my alarm brings me out of a dream involving pirates and some other stuff I can't really remember. Okay, I'm a little bleary-eyed and it feels like I and it feels like it takes me longer than usual to get dressed and down to the track. A glance at my watch reveals that I was right and I'm in fact running a little late. The thing is, there's no Emmy. That's odd. She should have she should be here. She definitely should be here. I mean, I was late. I guess I wasn't the only one who had trouble getting up this morning. I thought cro uh, the thought crosses my mind that it never quite stopped raining yesterday. Did she go running anyway? It seems likely. Um, Emmy's a lot of things, but cautious isn't one of them. She probably figured the rain would, uh, the rain wouldn't stop, and that's why she was so adamant about running alone. Still, I would have gladly run with her, even if it was in the rain. Heck, if anything, if anything, I would have. I would have been able to convince her to come in once it got really bad. That w that would be why she didn't want me along, of course. Even so, I can't help but I can't help wanting to know where she is. Oh, well, nothing for it. I'd better stretch and run and hope that Emmy shows up with a, gr a grin and an excuse. Okay, I'm running. On on my cool lap. On my cooldown lap, I'm forced to admit that Emmy isn't showing up. Furthermore, I have no idea where she is. Anxiety gnaws at me while at the same time, I wonder just why. Um, uh, I wonder just why I'm so worried over her. The run helped uh, the run helped to take my mind off it for a little while, but now that I'm finished, I'm back to worrying. Em, you should just go to Emmy's room, you know? It was weird not having her here. Downright unnerving. It suddenly dawned on me that I've been running to hang out with Emmy as much as I've been running to stay healthy. Probably more to be with Emmy now that I think of it. It's one of those things that are completely obvious that somehow I never realized it. She really is someone I enjoy being with. As revelations go, it's hardly world shaking. All the same, I find myself slightly shocked. When did this happen? Well. No time to think about it. Um, though I want to ponder this new development, I have a great, de have a greater desire to find out what's happened to Emmy. I'll ask the nurse when I stop him to see him. Okay. Well, you seem to be in good shape, Isao. That's good to hear. 
I replace my shirt and stand to leave as usual. Except instead of leaving, I ask a question. Hey, where's Emmy? She didn't show up this morning. Is she okay? While I try valiantly to conceal the anxiety in my voice, the nurse's expression suggests that I failed miserably. You mean she didn't tell you? She's sick in bed. What? Sick? The nurse shrugs. Yeah, she came to my office early this morning with a fever. To be honest, I'm surprised she made it here. She was burning up when she arrived. I believe she, pl I believe she'd planned to let you know, but she asked me to tell you. Oh shoot! <laughs> the nurse gives me a sheepish smile that seems at least partially sin uh, sincere. I forgot what voice I gave the nurse, but I guess whatever I'm doing now works. <laughs> I told her I'd stop by the track to let you know in case she forgot, too. Sorry about that. But we don't need to tell Emmy I forgot, right? I returned to the, I returned the nurse's smile with a devious one of my own. Of, oh, of course not. <laughs> this is fine blackmail material. I'll save it for whenever I need a favor from you. The nurse laughed. Well, I guess I deserve that. But you know, I've got tons of blackmail on you that you're not aware of. So don't push your luck, okay? My expression earns another laugh from the nurse. I'm just kidding, Kisao. But seriously, don't tell me I forgot, okay? Your secret is safe with me. Oh, good. Now go on. Get out of here. Wait, I've got one more question. Shoot. Is she going to be all okay? Oh yeah, definitely. Her fever was high, but it was already starting to go down by the time she came by my office. I'll probably check up on her again at lunch, to be sure, but I expect she'll be up and about by the by the evening, no matter what I tell her. Hmm, maybe I should visit her after class. It takes me a second to realize I've spoken aloud. The nurse raises his eyebrow and gives me a search, a searching glance for a moment. Hmm. Well, it might not be a bad idea. You could let me know if she'd uh, taken a turn for the worse, I guess. But no funny business, you got it? I know what meds you're on after all. I think that's a threat against my life, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Either way, I assure the nurse that my intentions are chaste and exit the office. Interesting that the nurse seems or the nurse sees me as some sort of potential suitor to Emmy. Even more interesting is how pleased that makes me feel. I need a shower. <laughs> cool. So like I, I have a, I, I do cable management in my, um, my room. <laughs> so, there's no cables on the floor, which is great. I taped, <laughs> I taped an extension cord to my desk. <laughs> I put my, um, I put my computer underneath the corner desk. Then I have a really long, um, HDMI cord running from my TV to my computer desk. And then I have a really long, uh... A really long USB-C cord for a microphone. And then I just have every other cord just um, plugged into other stuff. And then I have them taped. Like my light on my wall. Not, not on my wall, but my uh, the ring light I have is um, taped to my shelf. <laughs> and then I have my um, my LEDs in the bag just taped to my shelf as well. So that's, <laughs> that's crazy, whatever. The lunch bell rings and I find myself... Um, disinclined to make my way up to the roof. After all, I'm betting Rin knows where Emmy is, and if that's the case, then I doubt she'd bother um, going up there. More to the point, I doubt we'd have any sort of, uh, s uh, whatever the fuck that word says, conversation if she did, chan if she did. Chances are she'd prefer to be alone up there anyway, so... I don't act. I don't accidentally run her train. Run her train of thought or something. Unfortunately, I don't really feel like uh, heading, heading to the cafeteria either. Guess I'll go to the library instead. I need a new book to read anyway. Having finished my other one yesterday before bed, maybe I can find more by the same author. Cool. I love libraries. They smell like dust and paper and ink. Okay. All these stories and fact and facts uh, and opinions crowded together in one place makes the air come alive with potential. 
I'm not sure how to navigate Yamako's library yet, having mostly stuck to books I brought with me, so I searched for the librarian to ask for help. Hmm, I suppose she's not one. Can't believe it! Yuko, um, looking rather distraught, suddenly emerges from one of the aisles. Er, excuse me? Oh, can I help you? Actually, I was looking for a book. So am I. Advanced crypt uh, cryptography. We just got it in and now it's gone missing. I really, really wanted to read that one. Cryptography? Yeah, my, uh, that is, this guy I knew, no, um, not sure how to describe it. Skip to the end. He got me interested in cryptography. Only now the book's gone and I think it's been stolen. Sounds pretty terrible. Yeah, especially because now I have to search the whole library for it. Even though it's probably not even here. You seem busy. A little. She dusts off down another aisle and I resign myself to finding my own damn book. Mm, plenty of choices. Kenji has the book. <laughs> Come on. How did I get lost? These aren't even printed books. They're all in braille. I guess that makes sense in a school like this, but honestly, it's a little annoying. I'm sorry, is someone there? A lifting voice drifts out from behind one of the cubicles set up for research. It's Lily. As I approach, I see that Lily's been reading a book while I've been stomping about the aisles. Oh no, I should be apologizing. I didn't mean to make so much noise. My, is that you, Hisao? I've not heard of you in quite some time. I was I was beginning to think that you'd forgotten all about me. Oh, sorry. Lily laughs in that refined manner of hers and shakes her head. I'm only teasing you, Hisao. From what I hear, you've been busy. Morning runs with Emi Iborazaki and lunch on the rooftop, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah. Guess word gets around pretty quick. That's all. That's that, and I can't coax poor Hanako on the roof anymore. You three are always up there, claiming the spot for yourselves. <laughs> she, um, she chids me gent gently, though it's pretty clear she's just teasing me again. Still, I feel an odd need to apologize. Sorry, we could eat lunch somewhere else if it's a real problem. Oh no, I wouldn't worry about it. Hanako and I have other things to do at lunch too. Such as read in the library, as you can see. Oh, Hanako here. Uh, Hanako's here too. I didn't see her. Lily smiles a bit. Um, enigma. And it and whatever. The fuck. <laughs> oh, she's around somewhere. But I'm surprised, H Hisao. You're in here instead of up there. What brings you to the library? Well, Emmy's ill, and there's no lunch on the rooftop to keep me occupied. Lily raises an eyebrow at my statement before giving another chuckle. My poor Rin must feel left out. It's not like that. Ah, but I'm sure it isn't. <laughs> ah, but I'm sure it isn't. Emi tends to be the life of whatever group she's in. It's a shame to hear she's fallen ill. Will she be okay? Somehow, I get the feeling that Lemmy, uh, Lily's <laughs> just inquiring about... Um, inquiring out of politeness, but I respond anyway. Uh, the nurse thinks so. I'm going to swing by and see how she's doing after school myself. Another raised eyebrow. My, what a noble gentleman you are, he sal. It's nothing, really. Just checking up on uh, my friend, after all. Ah, so it's just a friend, is it? How disappointing. I blush. Gl glad that Lily can't see it. But somehow, she knows that I've been flustered by her comments anyway, and laughs. I'm sorry, Hisao. I'm teasing you again. Please do tell Emmy that I hope she feels better, won't you? A glance at my watch reveals that I'm very nearly out of time to find my book. Of course. Hey, I've got to find a book before lunch is over, so I'd better get moving. See you later. That was probably not the best phrase to use. Lily, however, takes my gaff in stride. Until we meet again, Hisao. <laughs> See you later, bro. <laughs> what are you doing, cat? I never do find the I never do I never do find the book I was looking for. Oh crap. I never do find the book I was looking for. 
but I walk out uh, with something else instead. My stomach growls slightly, letting me know that I should have had something for or something for lunch. Yeah. Oh well, I'll grab something before I visit Emmy later. Yes. It's, uh, it seems as if time has uh, decided to slow down for the express purpose of annoying the hell out of me. Class feels like it uh, drags on for ages. I suspect, I, suspect that. <laughs> I suspect that I'm being consumed with worry. Probably um, has something to do with it. Um, blessed, the bell rings and I dash out of the class, drawing a few raised eyebrows. I'm sure. I can't raise my eyebrow. I'm a VTuber. Uh, um, I can raise both of them. I can do that. I can't raise one. Goddamn. Um, I have spent the majority of the day fretting and unobtrusively uh, as I could. I'm kind of worried with that. Even though the nurse uh, thinks that Emmy is perfectly okay, I want to see for myself. It doesn't take long to get to the door's girls' dormitory and make my way to Emmy's room. Standing outside her door, I suddenly pause. What if she's resting? I'd hate to wake her up, especially if she's still feeling ill. Then again, if she sleeps all day, then it could throw off her sleeping schedule. But rest is important if you're ill, isn't it? I can't decide what to do, so I, so I settle for standing outside the door looking like an idiot. Then I hear Emmy's voice from behind the door. Uh, thanks for your concern, but I really am okay, she talking to me. I'll see you at practice tomorrow. Guess not. Uh, still, clearly she's not asleep, so I can knock without worry. So, why this clenched feeling in my gut? I wasn't nervous about dropping by the other day, so why today? Granted, I still haven't really had time to figure out this newfound interest in Emily's well-being. I don't have a lot of experience in the matter, of course, but certainly this seems to go beyond feeling of mere friendship. But could I take this step? Could I even bring myself to risk what I have right now? I mean, it's enough to be friends with her, isn't it? Either way, shouldn't I just open the door and see how she's doing? That's why I came here, right? What if she's not dressed yet? The image that flashed through my mind causes my heart to skip a beat, literally. I should probably not even think those thoughts again. <laughs> okay. Not if I want to avoid my heart, a heart attack. Okay. I suddenly realize I am still standing in the hallway looking like an idiot. Emmy still seems um, to be in the middle of a conversation, but I knock anyway. Hopefully she won't mind the interruption. You worry too much. Come in. The door's unlocked. Uh, so it is. I open the door and step in, which is about where my thought um, process comes to a grind halt. I I can't really get all that shocked thinking of this. And that's it. My <laughs> my eyes are forever stuck like this. <laughs> they don't open. They open like that. So I guess it's not. I'm not all that. I don't really look all that shocked. So let me hide that. Okay. There's Emmy. That's Emmy right there. See, it's Emmy. It's <laughs> okay. Whatever. Emmy is sitting up in a. In bed, her hair uh, tousled from a day spent asleep. I think this is the first time I've seen her without those familiar beads in her hair. <laughs> okay. Her gym shirt and bloomers obviously um, hastily um, pulled on before I came in and cre are creased and folded <laughs> from less than proper storage. Okay. Her legs lay bare on the sheets. I've never seen Emmy without prosthetics before. Yeah, here she is. Slender legs uh, terminating uh, in stumps just below her knees. Let me hide that as well. Those are Emmy's legs. <laughs> but as odd as the sight is, I find myself more captivated by everything north of the waist. Oh, okay. There's actually a full picture of this. So I'll just get this. I'll just get this one right here. It's a full picture. There we go. <laughs> it seems that Emmy has finished her conversation with whoever was on the phone. Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, whoever's on the phone with her, and is now watching my reaction closely, out of uh, her one eye open as she wipes sleep from her eye from from her other. 
Her expression, far from being embarrassed, is rather one of surprise. Why, um, why, surprisingly wide yawn. One purpose appropriate, one perhaps appropriate from such a small mouth. A grin that, um, for a brief moment seems almost flirtatious, tugs at the corner of her mouth as she takes the, the sight of me in. I can do nothing but remain in a state fluctuating between fear, confusion, and not a little bit of lust. Emmy hastily sweeps her hair out of her eyes, fixing it back into place before addressing me. You seem a bit caught off guard, he sow. A wave of laughter erupts from her, and I find myself grinning and rubbing the back of my head ruefully. Sorry, I've just... Hold up, I need to raise my things. I'm always in the green for some reason. Like, I talk at a certain pace, I get into yellow, but then I talk... Oh, I know I talk, and I'm still in green, but I think that should be fine. Okay, whatever. Sorry, I've just... Never seen someone so disheveled look so attractive. Never seen you without your legs on. Never seen you look so... I'm sorry. Emmy giggles again and moves to sit up a little straighter. I caught up in the moment. I'm caught up in the moment or in the movements of her shirt, very nearly losing myself. I was wondering what your reaction would be. The nurse called and told me you were going to drop by, you see. And I know you haven't seen me, well, you know, without legs. I respond in a total or I respond in a tone of casual surprise. Oh, and you, uh, oh, you don't have them on? I didn't notice. <laughs> this is almost the truth. I very nearly didn't. I'm not trying to be su suave or anything, mind you. Somehow, I think Emmy would get off, um, offended by that. Instead, she sticks her tongue out at me and chucks a pillow at my head. Ass. I definitely catch the pillow and take careful aim before throwing. Emmy laughs and rolls to one side, dodging my shot. The shifting, uh, of, uh, the shifting of her shirt distracts me enough so that the next thrown pillow hits me right between the eyes. Oof. I, uh, retaliated, of course. Or I retailed, of course. Retaliated, of course. What the fuck means? <laughs> and once I retaliated twice, um, well, a war was bound to break out sooner or later. And really, when Emmy appears to have far better aim than me, well... It was just a matter of time before I have to resort to a suicidal charge. Gotcha. Eep! Bam, smack. <laughs> Look at that guy, what the fuck? <laughs> and once the ch charge was accomplished, well, of course, I'd have to wrestle the pillow away from her. And with that kind of struggle, of course we wind up in this sort of position. Okay. <laughs> and so, I found myself staring down at her from my position atop her. She's grinning, eyes sparkling with amusement, maybe a little sweaty now from our tussling. Her chest is heaving up and down, sucking in air. The small bit of my brain that is not currently enraptured by the sight of the smell of the sight and smell of her observes that she must still be ill because her stamina is not what it should be. We stay there for a way, um, we stay that way for a while. I'm not sure how long because everything seems to go fuzzy. Everything that isn't her anyway. Her eyes meet mine and deep inside them I am almost, or I, I am almost catch, or I almost catch a glimpse of what fear longing hope emmy uh okay this is a different one there we go a cough suddenly uh, convulses her and i am almost uh stumbling in my haste to get off to apologize for everything i'm s sorry i shouldn't have it's fine it's fine it's uh, another one just, just gonna you know the face is different <laughs> whatever she gives me a reassuring pat on the shoulder. 
So what brings you here? Sorry. She's still breathing hard and that and that causes her voice to shake slightly. Well, before I was so rudely assaulted by pillows, I came to see how you were doing. Wham. Okay, another one. There we go. <laughs> uh, this earns me another shove, and I very nearly fall off the off her bed. Emmy's eyes sparkle again, and I wonder how I never noticed how attractive they are before. Consumed with worry, were you? Her tone is mocking uh, hotly. Uh, mocking, hotly, teasing. Okay. Uh, she throws her arm across her uh, her forehead dramatically, grin still apparent from her from underneath. I couldn't bear the thought of me laying deathly ill. As we both recover from our brief wrestling match, em <laughs> I'm gonna say it like that. Emmy appears to fall back on teasing me. Well, I wouldn't say consumed with worry, but after you. But after you didn't show up this morning like a total wuss, Emmy, pa Emmy pouts, crossing her arms um, petulantly and sticking her lower lip out. It's not my fault. Nurse wouldn't allow it. I'm sure he wouldn't. I completely believe you. Emmy sticks her tongue out again. You're just, you're such a jerky sow. So how was your day then, eh? Did you enjoy slacking off? Not really. The phone woke me up pretty early on. The phone? Yeah, the captain of the team called to make sure I was doing okay. Also, uh, to let me know it was okay to skip practice. Good. At least she wasn't alone all day. Someone checked up on her. Although, I can't help but think that it should have been me. Oh, that's good. He really keeps an eye on you, huh? Emmy shrugs. It's his job. Part of being the captain means you know where your team members are when they're not in school. Still, I guess it was nice of him to call, huh? Yep, sure was. Emmy yawns and uh, shimmies down into a more comfortable position. So, how was your day? Kind of uneventful, you know. I went ahead and ran by myself and talked to the nurse about how you're doing. Okay. I... May mean their thought the day's events, none of which are particularly engrossing. That's when I'm distracted by an arm finding its way across my waist. It seems that Emmy fell asleep while I was talking, so I drew her blanket to cover up. Damn. Okay. Damn, there's so many CGs, I don't know which one to use for the thumbnail. But look at it! Look at that. Uh, she's rolled over on onto her side, and now one leg is thrown over my leg, effectively trapping me. Hey. It seems a shame to wake her, but I have things to do. I gently shake her, but in response, she only tightens her arm's grip on me and sighs a little. My resistance um, to this position crumbles rather quickly. The feeling of her body breathing steadily is both calming and incredibly stimulating at the same time. My breathing cannot decide if it wants to relax or speed up. Relaxation wins and I find myself putting an arm around Emmy. I think I'm in love. The words slip out and hang in the air unnoticed. At least I hope they've gone unnoticed. Emmy whimpers weakly through her dream and her grip suddenly tightens again. For the first time since I've known her, I see tears running down Emmy's face. It feels like my heart is about to break. I instinctively tighten my own grip and stroke her hair in what I hope is a soothing manner. Words of comfort meaningless in this situation spring to mind. Maybe I should wake her. Are you supposed to wake people having nightmares? I can't for the life of me remember. The decision is taken uh, from me as Emmy suddenly jerks awake with a cry. Dad! Okay, now she's crying. This is more than I think I want to hear without her knowing. I quickly sit upright and gently shake her shoulder to stir her. Hey, you okay? 
What a silly question. Huh? What? He sow? She shakes her head as if to clear it and quickly wipes her eyes. You had a nightmare, I think. Emmy shoulders again and glances up at me a little cautiously, as if unsure whether or not she's actually up. Yeah, I guess so. You want to talk about it? Hmm. A speedy international debate seems to be going on in her head, which resolves itself with a shrug. No, I don't really remember much of it. I'm pretty sure she's lying to me, but somehow I don't think I should press the issue. Emmy shoulders again and turns towards me, looking a little sheepish. Sorry for falling asleep on you like that. I keep my voice as soothing as I can. Hey, don't worry about it. You've been ill. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess that cold medicine just made me a little drowsy. I guess so. Emmy does not strike me as the sort of person who'd fall asleep at the drop of a hat. Rin maybe, but Emmy's too, far too energetic. Emmy gives a half smile at my response, and then just like that, she's back to her old self. Well, prepare yourself for tomorrow morning, Hisao. We'll have to go twice as hard to make up for today. I went running this morning. No excuse. Oh, fine, I'll be ready for you. Emmy nods satisfied. Good. I take this as my cue to exit. Well, I'd better get going, especially if I want to get enough sleep for tomorrow. I hop off the bed and head for the door. Hey, Sal? Hmm? I pivot neatly on my heels and face Emmy. She opens her mouth and to say something, and then another first I see her falter slightly. She closes her mouth and opens it again. Thanks. For dropping by, I mean. You're kind of the first visitor I've ever had who wasn't Rin. Now that's surprising. I would I would figure that Emmy have people uh, dropping by all all the time. She's certainly popular enough, or so I thought. Always talking to people um in the hallway. Emmy hesitates again. And thanks for staying around after I, well, a look of pain flits across her face. You know. It helped. She um, brightens back up and waves cheerily at me. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you. Um, I'm just about to exit the door when something makes me turn around again. Hey, Emmy. Hmm? Anytime you need to talk, let me know, okay? Emmy seems taken aback by this offer. Her grin gets even wider. Sure thing, Hisao. See you this morning. Or see you the morning. Or see you in the morning. What the fuck? Ah. Uh, should I have left? Was she really okay? I want to turn around and march back down the hall. Open the door and tell her. Tell her I love her. Tell her I think she's beautiful. Tell her that I'll be there when she needs me. I want to stay with her. To hold her close as she falls back to sleep. How many nights has she woken up like that? Only to find that nobody's there. I want to be that person. She can, uh, she can be when she, uh, be, be when that helps. Uh, so what if, uh, I cannot read. It's a silly thought, I know. We don't know each other that well, do we? The whole idea, well, and while exhilarating, also makes me feel worry. Worry. Perhaps that I'd overstepped my bounds. And now to add to my troubles, it seems as if Emmy herself already has an interest in someone else. This track captain of hers, who seems so interested in her well-being. True, I've, on I've only seen the two of them together in a, a few times, but that doesn't change the fact that they seem better suited to one another. There really is, uh, there's really nothing to be done about that. I need to take my mind off this whole situation. I've got homework to do. Maybe that will distract me. Damn. Okay. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> that was that. Uh, that was crazy. Let me save. Creamy save. There you go. And guys, I'm gonna end the video here. Uh, we're an hour. We're an hour into the video, and you know, I I just want to end it here because uh, because I don't want to get too long. And I also think this is a great solid point. But whatever. Uh, I really like this game, so. <laughs> I'm glad I'm back playing it. Yay.
Yay. <laughs> I'm going to also continue playing the class of 09. It's the game I am also want to finish. And it's getting a new game this year. Don't know when it's coming out this year, but it's getting a new game. So I want to finish the first game and then do the re-up and then play the new game. Yes. Either way, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace out and...